Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Hybrid Geek Podcast, a bonus episode number 173 with Gordon Boys from Concept 3D. Uh, so, a great conversation about how institutions can best have uh, digital presence and kind of virtual wayfinding uh, so that students can take uh, virtual tours and uh, really plan out how they're sort of navigating the physical spaces of campus uh, and making informed decisions about where they're going to uh, attend college. So, I think it was a really great conversation. Cool thing to explore as we continue to kind of dig in over the uh, past couple of seasons of, you know, the different platforms and tools and ways that students are uh, working to make informed choices about their uh, higher ed options. So uh, definitely connect with Gordon, check out uh, all the stuff that he mentioned in the show notes as usual. And uh, without further ado, this is episode number 173, a bonus episode with Gordon Boys. For our episode today, I am super excited to be uh, talking about something that's a bit new to me and uh, it's always a good time when I, I get to learn along with our uh, listeners but you know around kind of virtual reality wayfinding maps and all that kind of good stuff how we're supporting students to uh, better understand you know their institutions that they are choosing to go to uh, the resources that are available and supporting them while they're there as well to kind of uh, you know be able to get better connected to um, all the different things that various institutions have to offer them. So uh, we will get to it, though, uh, as we always do, start out with uh, introductions and have our guests uh, introduce themselves and give a brief overview of their professional background and how they got to be where they are today. Um, since it's a higher ed podcast, I'll, I'll mention where I got got started. I, I went to Virginia Tech undergrad. I have always been in in and around technology. I was a computer science major as an undergrad and Spent a long time on the software side of telecom, uh, working for some small companies and some big companies, and then found myself um, more on the startup early stage software world for about the last 10 years. Spent uh, six years as CEO of Concept3D and uh, live um, in Colorado. Proud to have a team in Colorado, uh, a lot of folks on the East Coast and uh, a Minnesota office as well. Always been... um, at the intersection of, of business and technology. You know, you, you have that technology background. Like, what was it maybe that uh, interested you about Concept 3D and kind of getting into, you know, what is a fairly unique world of, of education and higher education in particular? Yeah, I think it was the interactions between our people and our customers. You know, I had an opportunity to work with an investor and see a lot of different companies. And Long story short, when I got involved in Concept 3D, there was just some uh, some magic there between our clients and our tech and our people, and I sort of fell in love with that and then the potential um, to enhance the business model. When I joined the company, we were largely in the pro-service business um, with just the beginnings of a, of a promising SaaS platform. And so it was also an opportunity to transition something that in some ways was pretty obvious, but there's a lot of hard work to transition from a professional services based business to a software business. We had great raw ingredients and just sort of fell in love with with that uh, combination of things. Also have found that uh, working with higher ed clients is they're just a great customer base. Um, They certainly push you, uh, they're understanding. Um, limitless feedback, as you probably know, um, working with uh, the university community. So all of those were the right ingredients for me to raise my hand and say, you know, I went from this sort of interim CEO uh, doing some restructuring work at the company to saying, I, re- I really want to be a part of this for the long run. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome that you've uh, stuck around because I think, yeah, it could have just been like, oh, you know, well, it's a place where like my skills could be useful. Then it's just like, all right, cool. Like, good luck. You know, just like leave it. But like, yeah, it's super unique. And I think it can be obviously super fulfilling and rewarding for the folks that uh, work in it. And, you know, obviously so many people have kind of uh, just stuck around for for a long time. And like, I mean, for me, I've only worked in education and I can't really imagine working anywhere else. But um But before we get too far, though, uh, just so folks kind of have an understanding, I know I tried to give kind of my brief sort of synopsis of uh, what Concept 3D does. But if you want to give, yeah, kind of a brief summary of Concept 3D and yeah, what you what you do. Yeah, our business is to partner with universities to um, take all the things that they already do, the campus that they already run and operate and create a better, stronger digital representation of that for prospective students, for their families that are making that decision um, on a college together, and then to enhance student life once that 
uh, student is on campus. We do that through three um, different offerings that are all part of one platform. Um, we do maps, uh, virtual tours, and a, an events platform for, uh, for higher ed. And uh, it's really focused around that sort of sense of community. And like I said, taking those things that already exist um, and just making them a stronger, better digital experience for, uh, for the students and prospective students. Yeah. And I mean, and anymore, I'm sure just like the need and importance has cemented um, over the past uh, couple of years with the pandemic where there had to be kind of a, you know, entire reliance on uh, kind of the digital manifestation of uh, institutions across the board, you know, with how they taught classes and how they just, you know, kind of conducted business. And then certainly, you know, a good portion of what you all do kind of on the, on the front end with recruiting students. But um and I guess just generally, like, you know, I always think about these tools kind of augmenting the work of on-campus professionals versus, like, seeking to replace it. And, and, and if it is, it's replacing the sort of, like, you know, tedious parts of, of the work and allowing professionals to do what they're, you know, trained to do and, you know, educated to do and everything. So, you know, how do you see the work that you and your team does augmenting the on-campus work? Yeah, I think augmenting is a great word. Complimenting is a great word. Um, mm -hmm. And just creating the best digital presence for things that already happen. So a uh, best example might be a map, right? And a, a lot of the places that we go to a college and university in the U.S. are the physical elements of the campus are a big part of that experience. And being able to represent that uh, to someone when when they're not able to, to come to the campus is really important, right? So how do you make them feel what that biology lab is going to look like or the community that gets created um, in the cafeteria or at, at athletic events? That's really what we do, right, with our campus map. I um, swear that I like the idea of augmenting. Those things are going to happen anyway. Those facilities exist anyway. But how do you put them in the best light so that... Um, that prospective student can get that feeling, that sense of being part of that community um, for for four years that are, are that are uh, that are in their future. I think the other real important part of that on on the mapping side and the virtual tour side is you make it more accessible, right? Um, some folks um, are able to because of you know their uh, their socioeconomic status, they're allowed to they're they have the opportunity to visit a lot of different campuses. Um, and they get that feel for campus and they get it in person. Um, they probably got it online first, but they end up, you know, really feeling that campus in person. But with our technology and partnering with our university customers, we're able to make it accessible to people who can't travel. Right. How do they get the feel for that university um, that they may they may be interested in? Maybe even the university is interested in them and offering them a scholarship. But um it's just not affordable to be able to travel. That's where those virtual experiences really complement um, all of the things that they can read about and see online and research online, but they can get a real feel for being there uh, while being remote. Yeah, I mean, I think that's such a huge part of it is, you know, recruiting diverse students and having someone feel really engaged and sort of reassured and excited because they have that sense of place because like yeah they, they just wouldn't have been able to come otherwise even if they're like semi-local but then certainly yeah, if you're recruiting kind of nationally or internationally and you know you're just getting all those different people able to really better understand what it's going to be like and um you know uh, i think yeah it's just really powerful and it almost has like an inverse thing i just thought of this question because like you know, I think the sense of place is so important. And I, I've worked a lot with uh, students who are studying in entirely online programs, but they still more often than not like chose the institution for a reason. Like certainly a, a good portion of it may be just kind of like the, the price or the convenience or whatever of the program uh, that they want. But like, if you can kind of nurture that affinity still for the institution and sense of place and all that kind of stuff, like, you know, obviously they could still come to camp, you know, they could, they might want to come to the bookstore and get some swag or something, you know, like, and those sort of things. So like, have you had any experience with that sort of thing of like still trying to like offer it to 
fully online students or maybe like, you know, uh, you know, populations like that where like they might be kind of just like written off uh, from one perspective. But do you see kind of like a use case for, for something like that? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that. Um, I hadn't really thought about it, but it did certainly percolate a thought. Um, I have a college freshman um, and he was considering uh, he had a, a non-college sport um, sport that he w- that was a big part of his life uh, in junior high and high school. And he was looking at those hybrid environments where they had a really strong online offering. Uh, but if the combination of timing and schedule and academics uh, was, was able to line up, they're like, you can come on campus anytime you want and be part of our on-campus program. And so we're completely fluid between the two different offerings. So you know, not necessarily specific to what our business, but I think what you suggest there uh, is increasingly important to students. It's relevant. And I think as higher ed evolves, um, there's a high likelihood that 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 ends up being increasingly relevant uh, to students in the future. And I think it's attractive based on, you know, my limited experience watching, you know, my son end up making his decisions. The other place that's probably relevant to your question uh, that we've seen, right, is during the pandemic, which we talked about briefly a few minutes ago, you saw the strong need for uh, events that were hybrid, right? And so uh, we recently acquired Localist and we love the whole world of events and using events to create a sense of community and sort of bolster the online presence of a university. And you get that with hybrid events, right? So there's no reason why an event can't be both an in-person event and streamed event. And that gets, I think, exactly at what you're talking about. It can be in a place, but it, it place uh, may or may not mean in-person uh to some of those people that are participating and and absorbing that content yeah and that was just like kind of a personal curiosity like i think it would probably yeah would never be kind of like the full focus necessarily but like yeah there's just i think going to be because as with many things we've kind of got a glimpse of like what's possible you know just in terms of like the the scale or the quality or sort of the agility that we could like do things you know in digital environments and just people being uh, who maybe were skeptical or at least just like have aware and just accepting and being like, Oh, okay, this, I can see how this works. And then just sort of like, you know, as like kind of like the work like you're doing, I think just continues to permeate people will be like, Oh, well, could we just like use this over here too? You know, like, you know, it wouldn't be like, Oh, we're only using this for our, our online students just to kind of get a little tease and glimpse of what our campus is like, even though they may never come. Cause it's like, I, I think that there will still be kind of like a small sliver of people that would like want to come to a campus that are studying fully online, because I think people who choose that are, are certainly, you know, wanting to, you know, be where they are and not have to disrupt their lives. But I think for the people that desire those things, yeah. Like having a very strong, like fully digital hybrid or, you know, any of those sort of, sort of things will just be like so impactful for them. So just like yeah. having that be kind of a consideration, but um but I think it kind of builds to like my next question that I want to ask is just sort of like kind of capturing the extent of as you know, you've seen it, obviously, like probably a good good variety of like institution types and the type of events and things that they're uh, doing and everything. But like, you know, moving forward, like what do you think are the kind of virtual experiences that campuses need to be planning for, you know, and I guess like, you know, primarily prospective students, but certainly you could kind of kind of just run the gamut of the things that you feel like need to be a part of kind of the strategy in terms of like virtual experiences uh, that these campuses are putting on? Yeah, I mean, so enrollment is super important um, to universities these days. We're seeing a dip in uh, the number of sort of available students. And so that requires that the colleges and universities have to put their best foot forward to attract those students. And so, but I actually think it was best, you know, the idea of a virtual presence was best explained to me by a, a CMO in a in a corporate setting. And, and what this CMO said to me was, we need to think about the virtual experiences this way. If I if I only show a perspective, um, a perspective client kind of written content, if you will, 
kind of walk them through a proposal. Maybe I use PowerPoint to them in the corporate setting. And I look at that in my sort of funnel. Um, I might be able to say that there's a 10% likelihood that I'm going to win that business. And when I look at someone who actually takes the time to come out to my facility and tour my facility, I have a 50 or 70% chance of winning that business. And what the virtual experiences do is they bridge that pretty big gap, right? And so if you can get someone who's interested in what you have to offer to experience your um, offering in a virtual way, you go from that 10% to somewhere in the middle of, say, 50 or 70%. So you maybe get to like 25 or 35% likelihood, right? Because you increase engagement, um, you give them a sense for the community, a feel for what the experience is like in person, and you just take them along the buyer's journey, if you will, using a, a little bit of corporate speak. And I think that that's how, um, especially as, you know, attracting um, students becomes increasingly important. I think that's how uh, colleges and universities need to think about it. It's a stepping stone along that journey to that magic moment where a student uh, commits to attending an institution. And we, we think that um, all three of the elements of our solution help with that engagement and help create that, uh, that sense of community, that sense of I fit here, the sense of I can excel here um, that I know, right? Um, it's been interesting going through having a high school senior last year and a college freshman this year, going really reflecting on how you make those decisions. And I think that um, just those virtual stepping stones take you along the way to that to that culmination where you say, yep, this is, this is right for me. This is the perfect fit. Well, and I think like, because I've talked to a lot of people over the past like couple seasons and stuff about just like helping students to make uh informed choices about higher ed because like there's so much kind of like anecdotal stuff or like you know people are just like i have to go here because that's just the way it is you know and there's like nothing about like oh well like the program i want is really strong here compared to other places or like you know they have great support resources or this or that or whatever you know and i think you know having just a strong digital presence anymore. Like that's where people are going to find those things where, yeah, they can be kind of the stepping stones where it's just like, Oh, well, wow. I didn't even know that they, you know, offered this or that, or that like, you know, this sort of would be what the community looks like, or yeah, like what the campus looks like, or um, those sort of things. Like you're just sort of starting to erode, you know, any sort of confusion or reticence or just even unaware, you know, people being kind of unaware of what an institution has to offer and everything. And certainly it also very applicable to uh, first generation students to be, you know, made more comfortable about kind of being reassured of all the supports that are in place. And this is how you're going to navigate getting from, you know, your residence hall to class to, you know, the dining hall and different things like that. Um, Cause yeah, again, like, even if they're like local, it could just be like, well, I, you know, I work full time or I, you know, and like, I don't have like reliable transportation or something, you know, and then just like they can get that full level of support. That's somebody who could like, oh yeah, I took like four tours in person because I wanted to like, you know, see all the things and like go in the buildings or do whatever, you know, but yeah. yeah so I think there's just so much, so much like benefit. Yeah. Just, I think moving forward, we're like, you know, like you said, sort of the, the nature of kind of like what enrollment I think is going to look like over like the next decade, you know, you need to be kind of really putting that best face forward and not kind of resting on your laurels. Uh... Yeah, I'll give you a good example of that, right? And it's, sometimes it's just the simple things. I had a, um, I was getting a tour of a university. Uh, they had a web technology just kind of walking me around and talking about all the important elements of, of how this particular university functioned. And he mentioned parking. And he said, you know, you think about parking as, um, you know, it's just a very tactical thing and it's cost related. But it turns out when you're supporting that student, it's kind of like what you were describing there, a, a student that is working and maybe they're living off campus, maybe they're living at home. But but um, one thing that's really important to them, right, is being able to park and then quickly get to their car so they can get to their job. And he said, you know, we re we find that for that student, um, they really want to understand because we're, they were in an urban setting. Where can they park? How far is it from their classes? Um, how long is it going to take them to walk back to their car so that they can get to their job? And I just, I hadn't really thought about that, but something that's super tactical that ends up for 
a certain demographic of students um, just being really, really, really important to understand and understanding that um, and, and sharing that to someone who's not visiting in person um, is even harder. And those are the like the little things that that we try and help with and the little things that are important in the in the decision making process for uh, for a high school senior. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it all matters because I, I, I use, you know, I speak in metaphors uh, quite often, but just like, you know, that idea of like, you know, kind of like the nagging pebble in your shoe that you just can't get out of it is like either, you know, it's a point of ambiguity of like, I don't know if I can make this work with like, yeah, like schedules and getting around and doing this or that, or the other thing, or like, um, if you're like doing it or maybe doing it not in the best way, then it's just like this nagging thing. And that can just grow to be enough of like kind of a grievance, like where like I chose to enroll here because like, Oh yeah, you know, my friends are here. Or there's the, the other thing, but just like, this isn't going to work. Like I can't make this work. And if you do kind of like, you know, cause I think it, it just can be so much part of like, certainly like the recruitment before a student like pays a deposit and all that. But then if they're like, okay, I am studying here. This is what my life looks like. These are where my classes are. Like, let's do some wayfinder. How am I going to get from, you know, point A to point B and all that and having folks from campus maybe helping with that. Cause I've, and that, I don't want to get in my soapbox about too many things, but like, there's so much about like higher ed that again, it's kind of anecdotal. So like, even when you're there about like, Oh, register for these classes or like do these things. And it's like, students will kind of just like figure it out on their own. But if they had just like stopped and asked, a staff member about like you know their class schedule or like you know getting around or something they would be much better off so just like you know the orientation process preparing and all that like yeah there's just so much here i think we're and i'm just love kind of what we're what we're riffing on here in this kind of gf session of like you know just these resources for students to be you know better supported and prepared and engaged you know with kind of the digital face uh for institutions but you know, it's something that's a little bit foreign to me. I think obviously like we've talked a lot about, you know, virtual tours or just sort of campus visits in general, like, the, you know, whether they're happening in person or online, like with that, I think as sort of like, I think kind of a crucial piece here, like a goal to kind of aim for, like what else I guess is sort of resonating with you of like what makes that like so important um, and so crucial to kind of aim for. Cause I'm sure like maybe some of the things that you do maybe kind of nudge, you know, especially prospective students towards like wanting to kind of get a little bit more up close and personal with the institution. So what have you seen as kind of like, you know, why that's so, so valuable? I'll start with, we try and help bridge that, that, that gap, right? So, you know, as an example, we have some of our clients that right inside their virtual tour, you get to sign up for um, an in-person tour. That's the obvious next step as you're progressing in your in that commitment to saying, hey, this is the right place for me. I think the reason that both of those are so important, if you've ever talked to uh, a prospective student about their tours, you'll realize that eight or nine times out of 10, they're super binary. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I can tell you that they end up, that, that 18 or 19 year old, right, most times, ends up leaving that college campus going, yeah, I can see myself there or no, nah, it just wasn't right. And it's just a feeling. It's a, probably a combination of things that go into that feeling, right? Um, some of them are probably really rational. Um, some of them, pro you know, might happen to be, was it, you know, was it raining that day or some things that probably shouldn't influence us that much, but there's just something magical that happens about um, being on a tour and being there. Um, you, 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 get to sort of say, yeah, this is, this is where I fit in. This feels like the right place for me. You know, you're making that decision between sort of how urban versus how rural do you want the campus to be? How big versus how small, um, you know, sort of how outgoing versus how sort of business oriented um, is the student body. And you're just getting this feel for class size is another one. If you happen to get to peek into a class or join a class. Um, just depending on your background, um, you're trying to figure out that fit for you. And I find from talking to the high school seniors that I talk to that, uh, sometimes they're looking, it's not predictable based on where they've been. Sometimes they're looking for something that's totally different than what they've already experienced on some of those axes, if you will. And sometimes they're looking for something that's 
uh, that's pretty similar uh, because they're they're they want to feel comfortable. They feel like, hey, the more comfortable I am with where I'm going, the more similar it is to what I've done before, the better I'll be set up for for success. I don't want too much uh, volatility introduced to my education. But all of that is all that comes back to there's just something that happens when somebody has a visit. Um, that gets them to say, yeah, this is right for me or no, I'm probably not so much. Um, I've seen it with, with my own son. I've seen it with uh, lots of the high school seniors that I've talked to over the years that, that that's just what ends up happening. We try and help um, our clients put the, their best foot forward when they're doing it virtually. And then obviously once they're on campus, um, le basically leave it to them with, uh, with the occasional sort of assist from the map, if you will. And, and, the, and the way we get an assist from the map is sometimes we um, stu prospective students and their families will do a, a, uh, a sort of self self guided tour through the university with the help from our uh, mapping application. And I just really like just the idea of like, like you said, just really getting towards like what it is that somebody's looking for. Cause I think sometimes when they see something and be like, Oh, well, this is too big or, Oh, this is too small and all that. Like they might not have been able to articulate that beforehand, but, now, as they get sort of like, you know, actually looking at institutions and how, you know, the campuses or um, just like the general environment and stuff, they can start to, I think, maybe articulate that better. And on the institution side, like you said, like they can really feature themselves in such a more kind of vibrant way. And I'm sure maybe start to realize like, well, how could we, you know, exemplify our like kind of unique strengths and everything to really kind of make it clear because i think at a certain point i'm sure if you if you toured a bunch of campuses like right you know rapid fire one after another they'd start to kind of blur together you know you'd want to be able to lean on those differentiators which i think is just going to be really important um moving forward for institutions as well but um yeah so it's just great to hear i think just yeah the, the work that you and your team are doing just to help yeah kind of bridge these gaps for students um all across the country so it's it's I mean, just really important yeah Think about some of the intimidation there, right? Imagine, imagine making one of the, I don't know, three or four largest financial decisions in your life as a 17 year old. I mean, um, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty hard, right? They're not used to doing the due diligence, if you will, on, on such a big decision, where they're going to live for the next four years, who they're going to be around for the next four years. What, 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 um, uh, what are they going to learn for the next four years? And, and, oh, by the way, um, that's a substantial financial commitment for, for most, if not all sort of families these days. Mm -hmm. Well, as you, you know, are just kind of immersed in this work or, uh, you know, we always like to give kind of the opportunity for anything that's been grabbing your attention, uh, resource wise, if it is books or other podcasts or articles or, um, things like that stuff for folks to check out, uh, that we can put in the show notes. Yeah, I'll give you a few that that come to mind. Most of mine are about building the team, right? Uh, it's about how do I build the best set of people at Concept 3D. And so uh, one is I love the book and the framework, The Loyalist Team. It's a, it's a book by uh, four different authors. Linda Adams is the first author. And she and her co-authors talk about, uh, you know, trust and, and authenticity and a framework for that within a company and sort of how to assess yourself as to where you're at. And so I think for me, it's just really important um, as a leader to make sure that as a team, we have the right um, framework for evaluating how we interact with each other. So that's my go-to there. Um, the next is a book by Gary John Bishop. Um, it's on F yourself. And, um, if you haven't read that, it's a great book. I think especially, I love it personally, but I found it's been especially good for people that are early in career um, because it's really about all the head trash that, that we can create for ourselves, especially with a, a little bit of a uh, corporate backdrop. He does both sort of a personal discussion and then kind of a, a corporate discussion on a lot of these things that we end up creating as our own sort of monologue and our own truth. And um, and he just talks about how to spot that and how to be your best self um, when these things are going through your head. Um, and the third thing that comes to mind, just because it's at the perfect intersection for me of of human performance and extreme sports, um, 
is the the work of Stephen Kotler. Um, Rise of Superman is my favorite of his books, but it's all about you know brain science and flow state and human performance. And for me, it's just a great framework to use to think about you know during the workday. Uh, when are we at our best and sort of recognizing those patterns and trying to give ourselves in our day to day the most opportunity to be in the flow state the longest. Uh, and, and, you know, for your podcast listeners who aren't familiar with the concept, just flow state is the sort of peak um, of human performance and, and you can't be in it for, uh, you know, 24 seven. But how do you put yourself in it for the longest um, possible period of time so you have the highest performance. Those are those are the three books over the last I don't know three or four years that I find myself most referring people to on my team or sort of most identifying with. Um, the probably the only three books in the last few years that I've read more than once. That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean it, it's always intriguing. Yeah, kind of uh, geeking out on those sort of like you know, productivity things. Cause I think like there is kind of like just a natural uh, alignment when you like read, or I guess I'll say like when I read those things where it's just like, Oh yeah, I do prefer to start my day with this or like, you know, end my day with that or whatever, you know, just sort of like following, uh, you know, your own sort of like internal cues uh, and doing stuff like that and just yeah, getting kind of uh, deep into those sort of uh, different habits and stuff. But um, great. Well, yeah, we'll link out to those, uh, resources in the show notes but um we will end as we always do uh i think you've already shared so many incredible uh thoughts and things but if you wanted to uh give us a final thought or a call to action uh to end the episode with uh the floor is yours you know being part of the hired community for the last six years watching a lot of kids make that transition from high school to college uh and then sort of thinking about the value proposition of of higher ed in the u.s people have said it before but it's it's more more true and more present for me than ever and that's that it's you know it is for a lot of people the absolute best investment that you can make it positions people for that transition from adolescence to adulthood um, from student to employee and um, it's just really, really important. I think that everybody who's involved in the in that system um, or supporting folks like like you and I, uh, you know, it's just to think about how we can continue to invest, evolve, and uh, and keep higher ed um, in the U.S. accessible, keep it the best in the world. Right? We have tons of students who come from all around the world to go to school in the U.S. There's a reason for that. Not that students don't go the other direction, uh, but I think we just have the absolute best kind of four year college experience in, in the world. Um, and we need to we just need to continue to innovate and evolve that. And um, I'm just happy to be a part of that whole ecosystem as a, uh, a CEO of Concept 3D. Uh, but I think about that all, more than ever um, over the last probably three years or so. A lot has changed over the last couple of years. I think it has a lot of folks kind of reevaluating uh, many things in life, but certainly <laughs> appreciate kind of the the constant of, yeah, I mean, education just being such a great catalyst for, you know, personal change and kind of benefits for society and everything and how, yeah, I mean, just, uh, you know, I mean, I've yeah, been working on the outskirts here um, for several years and a lot of folks we have on the show uh, have as well and stuff, but just like, yeah, like you said, kind of trying to bring the best of, you um, yeah, kind of modern technology to help support institutional missions and support students and all that good stuff. It's a uh, it's really good good inspiration to uh, get out of bed in the morning. But yeah, just appreciate you uh, hanging out, Gordon, sharing all that you did. We'll have ways to connect with you and Concept 3D and everything that you shared in the show notes as usual. But yeah, it was a great conversation. Really enjoyed uh, kind of jamming out on this. And uh, yeah, just appreciate you and, and the great work that you and your team are doing. Thanks, Dustin. Really appreciate your podcast and, and your commitment to the space over the years. Um, so yeah, happy to be a part. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.